And so I was like, you can't have soup and salad. We've only got one bowl. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'm Donnie Iceman. <laughs> wow, wasn't that just a riot, folks? However, nothing can prepare you for the performer we have coming to the stage next. <laughs> Here to give us some of his greatest hits from the summer smash water cooler comedy, Jonesy's Troubles, it's none other than Jonesy himself, the delectable, ever zany, Robbie Peters! All of this time and now look where I've landed. Sometimes your dream isn't what you thought. Be the fucking pop that we've made you. Sometimes it takes testing all the bookends to learn where your soul is truly caught. Be the fucking puppet we made you! Turns out I can't be bored. I thought I had my whole plan laid out, but I just can't go down that road. No, I just can't go down that road. Where I'm suppressing what I'm all about. Robbie Peters! Hello, good evening. Thank you for that incredibly sentient introduction, Marty. I feel so human right now, I could just shit out a microchip. <gasps> so, I uh, know I'm supposed to come out here and say all the things I'm expected to say and play that miraculous one-dimensional character I've worked oh so hard to master, but where's the fun in that? Let's say we change it up a bit and uh, talk about something actually worth a fuck. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I'm going to hell, I get it. Speaking of hell, how about that draft lottery? Listen, I do respect our military. I need to make that clear, I do. But you gotta admit, that draft lottery comes off like demented bingo night. I mean, I can't be the only one that looks at the screen and hears a little voiceover of, and now it's time to play Induction Introduction with your host, General Gershi. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get right into it with our festive blue calendar capsules. We have... Brrr, September 14th is our first lucky sacrifice. I mean victim. I mean winner. I mean winner. Oh! <laughs> I'll say, before we pick our next winner, why don't we take a moment to appreciate our new and improved calendar wall, complete with 366 slots, so that even little leap year Johnny can join in the fun. Because like we always say here in the studio, when it comes to the progeny... No, dodgy dodgy <laughs> Finally, something with a kernel of substance. No shallow script to kowtow to. For so fucking long, there's been a cognitive dissonance. Could say what I think or think what I do. Pursue the wrong career. And Not to mention listening to the news anchors speak about the wars, like watching Dorothy and Toto finally meet the wizard. They're all like, we are winning. We are winning. Pay no attention to the bodies behind the curtain. You're fired. Gonna be judged either way. Rather speak true than keep my thoughts at bay. Gonna be judged either way. Rather speak true than keep my thoughts at bay. I do think I have a solution to the draft situation, and it's predicated on the fact that as a country, we still value pride more than we value pragmatism. Let me just do Jonesy! I just got fired, sir. No can do. However, what we can do is beat the draft, and here's why. Because we still value pride over pragmatism. Here's how we do it. First off, ignore the induction letters whenever they come in. Don't burn the card, don't flee the country, don't do any of that shit. Just ignore the letters. Then whenever the powers that be show up at your door and they say something like, Son, you've been inducted into the United States Miller, before they can finish, you just go, Jelly protest. <laughs> they will be completely at a loss. They'll be like, Major, we can't under any circumstances have this sorry excuse for a man wearing the uniform. At that point, you just agree with them, but keep with the theme we've established. Just limply nod your head like, Jelly protest. Okay. Maybe at worst, they'll bring you into a review board for questioning like, Son, are you a conscientious object? Jelly protest! 
right over the fucking table. Let them analyze this dilemma. If they can figure out how to A-bomb an entire fucking country, no doubt they can figure out you. All right, actual worst case scenario. Let's say they still decide to draft you and they deploy you off to Saigon. The Viet Cong, they too are more prideful than they are pragmatic. They are a very proud people. You're there in the jungle behind enemy lines. They're about 20 seconds away from shish kebab in your ass. And instead you just jelly protest right there in the bushes. They'll be like, you fight now. You just keep snaking yourself there in the bushes like jelly jelly. They'll be too proud to even touch you. Conflict over. <laughs> Wait for the helicopter and jelly your ass over there. <laughs> Mr. Peters, you are under arrest for obscene and indecent behavior. Obscene and indecent? And me without my dictionary. <laughs> and now they're coming to take me away. Is the tide turning our way? And though I'm terrified, it's still a beautiful day. You will never work in this town again. Sure, I was born to keep them entertained. You will never work. But maybe more so to keep their thoughts unchained. Decide to be who you are. Unchained. Delinquent savior. Unstrained misbehavior. Indignant or pain dissenter. Inventor. Insane. You have a some role. all over you and I don't really want a shock to shock I just want to make them unafraid to knock on doors without the fear they'll be kicked to the floor or locked in some lore that they've been forced to adore can't believe it took so long to see I've been living out the wrong trajectory funny how we tend to just accept society even when we could hardly agree Not a preacher man, just have some thoughts to share. Lock me up, put out a ban, but thoughts still fill the air. Comedy is there, comedy won't care, cause jokes are things.